Hi, welcome back to Barry's Workshop. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this parting tool for wood turning for free. The blade that I'm using for this project is from an edger and it is in really, really rough shape, but I'm convinced that it's good metal. The problem is that it has a hole in the center, so I'm using uh, extra scrap from another blade that I cut roughly round, and then I'll finish making it round on the bench grinder. And this way it'll have a nice snug fit. And now it just fits inside that hole. And then I'll weld that plug in place using the TIG welder. And this doesn't have to be pretty, but I'm focusing to make sure that it's a structurally sound and there are no gaps. And I'm going to flip it over and uh, weld it from the other side. And the replacement blade that I used was just a little bit thinner than the main blade, so I'm going to add a little bit of extra filler rod uh, to, to raise the level up on the back side. And I deliberately left all the welds proud, so I'm just going to grind them all flat. And if you use compatible filler metals, um, it should be as strong as it would have been if it never had to weld in the first place. So now I've got a short, fat blade, and what I really want is a long, skinny blade. So I'm going to cut the blade in half lengthwise. Here I'm using my plasma cutter. I probably should have used a straight edge. It would have been uh, less ragged, less grinding. But a grinder works pretty well for removing the metal and smoothing up that edge. And then I'm going to bevel the ends on both pieces and so that when I lay them together they'll match up. And I'll just clamp the two pieces flat on the welding table and weld them directly there. And again I'm using my TIG welder. I find that TIG is the easiest to control and to make sure that you get full penetration welds. And I'll flip it over and weld it on the other side. And the TIG welder has post flow, which means the shielding gas continues to flow after you've stopped welding and that protects the weld from contamination while it's cooling. And again, I welded it proud, so I'm grinding it flat. And here we're able to see some of the shiny metal that's underneath all that crud that was on the outside. And here's my first pass at trying to clean up the edges and make them as straight as I can. The angle grinder is fast, but it's a little bit harder to control. So I'm going to start off with the angle grinder to get close to being straight, and then I'll move over my bench grinder, and then I'll compare it to a flat edge and use that as a reference. And I was able to get it pretty darn straight this way. And I'm not making it totally sharp, but I'm going ahead and take the blade to roughly the shape that it's going to be. A belt sander mounted in the vise is good for cleaning up the edge of the blade. And I'm using some pieces from the scrap bin to make a handle and just epoxying it together as a kind of a sandwich. I considered putting some brass rivets in the handle, but I decided it wasn't necessary. The oscillating belt sander is good for cleaning up the edges and rounding off the corner. And 
and then I'll finish the wood with a combination of uh, boiled linseed oil and varnish. Kind of a homegrown Danish oil. And now it's time to put it to the test. What I like about this one is that it's rather thin. It's only about an eighth of an inch wide, so it makes a thinner curve. Seems to work just fine. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you watching. Take care. I'll see you next time.